A reading from the second book of Kings. One day, Elisha came to Shuman, where there was a woman of influence who urged him to dine with her. Afterward, whenever he passed by, he used to stop there to dine. So she said to her husband, I know that Elisha is a holy man of God. Since he visits us often, let us arrange a little room on the roof and furnish it for him with a bed, table, chair, and lamp, so that when he comes to us, he can stay there. Sometime later, Alicia arrived and stayed in the room overnight. Later, Alicia asked, can something be done for her? His servant Gehazi answered, yes. She has no son, and her husband is getting on in years. Elisha said, call her. When the woman had been called and stood at the door, Elisha promised, this time next year, you will be fondling a baby son. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Were we indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life? If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once and for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as dead to sin and living for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me. And whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. Whoever receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives only a cup of cold water to one of these little ones to drink because the little one is a disciple, amen, I say to you, he will surely not lose his reward. The Gospel of the Lord. Bishop Mullooly, I present to you Benjamin to be confirmed Saint, after St. Michael the Archangel, and Casimir to be confirmed after St. Casimir to you for the Sacrament of Confirmation, Good. prepared by their families and formed at the St. Peter Cathedral School. I testify to their readiness to the sacrament. Good. Thank you very much, Father Joe. Uh, you can be seated, please. Now, I see Mariah's coming in. Mariah, if you come up into the fourth pew, I think. Yeah. Oh, sister's there with you. You're okay. What I didn't say at the beginning, and you probably couldn't hear me anyway because apparently the microphone wasn't working, but all five of our, our two young men and three young women are students from St. Peter's Cathedral School. And Sister Donna Smith, our lector today, is the principal who will be moving on to another assignment with the Daughters of Charity. So I was delighted that we could celebrate these sacraments while she's still here. Um, Cash, I think you're going to continue Catholic education at St. E's, Ben, you're going to Sally's. And our three young ladies will enter third grade when we open here next year, right, Father McQuaid? September 1st. Okay, okay September 1st, okay. Let me just say a few things about the readings. Then I want to talk to my two confirmandi and also my three young ladies who will be receiving First Communion. The, the first reading is all about hospitality. Hospitality. The woman from Shunin, which is about 30 miles northeast of Samaria, an area during Jesus' time that people would avoid because they didn't think the Samaritans practiced their religion well, she was very influential, took initiative, she was resourceful, she was determined. She told her husband, this is a holy man, Elisha the prophet. Let us take care of him when he comes by. And they did. And eventually, the one young man who worked with Elisha asked, is there, Elisha asked him, is there something we can do for her? And Elisha was told, um, they have no son. And so next year, he tells them, you will have a son. Um, God rewards and blesses those who love us and love others. And that's been our theme, actually, during these 15 weeks, social distancing. It's our way of loving others by distance, masks, and washing hands that have kept us here in our diocese, not only in Delaware, but in Maryland, in pretty good shape. A number of the dioceses, as I know, in the South are ready for cycle two. Dallas, Florida, a lot of Texas. So I, I just encourage you, our social distancing, our care for others is living out that second great commandment. And the woman who took care of Elisha was doing exactly that. Now, Paul to the Romans. Last week, Father McQuaid preached on Paul to the Romans because we'll have that right into September. And it's a great letter, probably written about 30 years, 35 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. But it's great for us today 
because it reminds our young ladies and our two gentlemen that everything begins our relationship with God through the sacraments. It's through baptism that we become dead to sin and we live for God in Christ Jesus. That's true for all of us. And you young ladies who were baptized now are being invited by Jesus to partake of his sacred body. He's anxious to be with you in this special way. Um, Cash and um, you and Ben both now are asking the Father to send the Holy Spirit that began your spiritual life in baptism in a deeper way to help you to live out your commitment and your life even better. We've been kind of deprived of the Eucharist during these 15 weeks. We've never been deprived of the Holy Spirit. But this is a good reminder that we will begin slowly. Uh, just as a sidebar, I've delegated my pastors to confirm their own confirmandi. I am, by the end of December, I will be 42 confirmations in arrears, and we're only able to do small groups, so there'll probably be two to 300 individual services. Today, I think at St. Mary Magdalene, there are four First Communions, two more tomorrow and one yesterday because they can only accommodate seven at a time. But Paul, in his letter to the Romans, reminds us of how important the sacramental life of the church is. This is God's initiative. God wants to send the Spirit. God wants Jesus to be with you. Now in the Gospel, we continue to listen to Jesus telling us what we need to do to be worthy of him. That's what he says, worthy of him. And basically, when you go through all that we heard, it simply means we have to be focused on him and not distracted by other things. And that's always true for all of us. To be focused on the Lord, his works, his goodness, and in that way, we become worthy of him. Now, Cash and Ben, I've been celebrating confirmations now for 20 years. And I've always used the same theme um, with my confirmation classes, whether it's two or 120. And the theme is this. There's the rest of the journey. Today is a stepping stone. This is not a graduation. This is a stepping stone to a greater involvement and participation in the church and in your faith life. And what you need to do to sustain that is the weekly celebration of the Eucharist. Once we're back on track again, and once I can tell everybody you can come back now, um, that is going to be critical. It's what keeps us alive. Do this in memory of me. We say that at every Mass. Jesus wants us to do that in his memory, and he wants to take the initiative, as he does with these three young ladies today, to come to each of us in communion. Now, there are three things I always encourage my confirmandi to do every day, and I want to encourage uh, Mariah and True and Cameron to do the same as upcoming third graders. Every day, pray, serve, smile. Now, you go to a Catholic school, so you pray multiple times a day. But when you're home at the summer or and when you're maybe away or whatever, always have a, at least a simple conversation with the Lord every day. You can't put him on your playlist or whatever those contraptions have, but you can be conscious of him and his presence to you and his wanting to have a place in your life. Sir, it's what we're called to do as believers of Jesus, to look around and see how we can help others. That's always true. And I know from St. Peter's School that you do a lot of service and have done so, and you're gonna find the same thing as Sally's and St. E's this coming fall. And finally, smile. Let me see, well, of course I can't see because you have masks on. I usually ask the confirmation students to smile for me and it's like pulling teeth. But my encouragement is to advertise 
how blessed you are because God is with you. The Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Eucharist is, becomes part of you. To advertise through your faces how fortunate you are. I'm convinced in the early church that the phenomenal growth that took place then was simply because the early Christians were happy people. They were happy campers. They advertised that, and other people would look and say, I want part of that action. We today, 2,000 some years later, are the vehicles to draw people closer to Jesus. And if we advertise through our faces and our presence and even our words, we witness the good news, we continue that great work. So, um, Cash, um, Ben, for the rest of your journey, weekly celebration of the Eucharist. For all of us, pray, conversation with the Lord every day. Serve, see how you can be help helpful, and advertise God's blessings to you. For our confirmation itself, the first part is the um, baptismal promises, which usually is enfolded into our creed. So I'm gonna ask all of you to stand, please. And especially Cash and Ben, I want to hear you reciting the promises, but all of us will support you um, as you commit yourself to God and his ways. And our response is, I do. Do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. I do. do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Cash, I'd ask you and Ben to stay standing, but if everyone else would be seated as, as I ask God to send the Holy Spirit upon both of you. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these his adopted sons and already born again to eternal life in baptism that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your sons to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin, send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord through Christ our Lord. Amen. Say Michael the Archangel, right? Say Michael the Archangel, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And congratulations to you, Ben.
Casimir, right? <laughs> Casimir, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And Cash, congratulations to you. My brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God the Almighty Father and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope, and charity which proceed from his Holy Spirit are one. For all people who have been baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of nations who seek truth, justice, and reverence for human life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those Christians who have given up everything in following the call of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the spirit of welcome, encouragement, and support for our pastors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and for all those who have died, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors, the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful. Listen favorably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you we ask this through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption, by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit, 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels, we sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also, Lord, your sons, whom you have been pleased to confirm today by bestowing the Holy Spirit, and keep them always in your grace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may be married to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you shed blood under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity, foster her growth in the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down your heads for the blessing. May God the Almighty Father bless you whom he has made his adopted sons, reborn from Walters and the Holy Spirit, and may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. May his only begotten son who promised that the spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. May the Holy Spirit who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you.